Hey everyone, Sean and Dave here from Saturday Morning Cartoons. We cannot start this week's show, absolutely cannot start this week's show, until we thank the following people who went to Patreon.com to sponsor this show. Derek Haynes. Alex Kazanis. Jack Connolly. Jonathan Renteria Elie. Bill Dixon. The wonderful Melanie Harker. Dr. Jason Woods. Oh, the fantastic Allison Keene. The all right Jamal Newman. The so-so John Helter. Battle Matt Fitness. The wonderful David Trumbor. And the one and only Sean Paul Ellis. Hey, out there, if you guys want to be on this list or just want to know what's coming up next week on the show, check out patreon.com slash Saturday Morning Cartoons for more details. And remember, that's morning with a U. Thank you so much for sponsoring us. Thank you so much for listening. And now, on with the show. Hello and welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons, the weekly podcast that revisits, reviews, and ridicules some of the world's weirdest animated series. Coming to you from Saskatchewan for some reason, I'll be your co-host, Dave Trumbore. Joining me as always, they call him Mr. Pig, my co-host, Sean Paul Ellis. How's it going, bud? Uh, David, 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 buddy. I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing good, man. I really, I had nothing to tie into that quote about you being called Mr. Pig. Wasn't okay. a burn on you. Wasn't trying to redefine your your nature or anything. <laughs> no, that I took it as a personal slight, and I'm happy about it. So 100% let's... was not. Just wanted to get that line in because it's one of my favorites. I 100% took it as a personal slight against me, my character, and myself. Look, but moving on to... from your personal feelings. Speaking of personal favorites, what are some other personal favorites of our uh, of our little show here today? Oh my god! So we have to uh, we have to give a couple shout outs very early in the show. And we, we want to let everybody know that we, we really appreciate these people for dropping us an email. The amount of, of information and content from these two people is staggering and fantastic. So Shannon messaged us after our All Grown Up episode with some just crazy insight into what the show is, not to mention a ton of recommendations. And so we can't wait to actually go back and dig into those now with her insight so thank you, Shannon. We appreciate that. And then also our listener, William. William, digging through our back catalog, doing a great job of giving us a complete stream of consciousness for how, uh, for how much he hates some of my opinions about things. So I love it every I, day. I personally love it as well. It makes me feel much better about what my side of things are. So thank you, William. Uh, I, I love this, though, because this is the whole reason that we started this show up. It's not just so that... Sean and I can keep in touch and talk about crazy cartoons and stuff. We want to talk to people out there who have this passion about cartoons or just love going back and, and revisiting some of these like nostalgic titles, nostalgic moments, or even going back to visit some of this stuff and see if it holds up. Or if not, how catastrophically it all falls apart 20 years later or more. So thank you guys so much for reaching out. We really do love and appreciate uh, getting your messages. Yeah, but well, One of the whole reasons that we had the idea to do cartoons for this show was because in the, the mid-2000s when Voltron came out on DVD, I, I had loved Voltron growing up, and then when they had these DVDs out, I had to get my hands on them, and I Netflixed them. This is when I could still get DVDs through Netflix. Mm-hmm. I got them, and I watched probably the first, the first disc, and there was so much reused and recycled animation, and it, it, it became disheartening for me to watch. And so we, we've coined this term, the Voltron effect, which is we where you have... haven't used it in a while. Haven't used it in a long time. Neither yeah. have we used Rule 34 in a long time. I was either. just thinking that, yeah. Because yeah. I, I actually recently looked up some of the stuff that we've talked about in Rule 34, and then I was <laughs> I remembered why we stopped doing it. Yeah, no. That's because of great... nightmares and psychological trauma that I, I have to pay <laughs> to get rid of. And I can't afford it. Uh, so that Voltron effect, that is that thing when you have that, that anchor of nostalgia of something that you love so much... And you rewatch it, and it just it shatters you as a human being yeah. to the point where you have to wonder, why did I watch this? So it happens, but it's fine, and we get a chance to talk about it. So we can all agree to disagree yeah. and agree that I'm right. Perfect. But I agree with William. That yeah. sounds well, totally wrong. Well, I love enough. cops. Cop. Uh, cops. Man, tonight, this is great. if you want like three, three throwbacks to yeah, the early right? days, like the pre-episode 100 days. I love it. <laughs> uh, hey, if you were thinking... I wonder if they're going to quibble and complain over some things tonight. Guess what? We are. We are in our second week of Disney madness. If this is your first time listening to us, every March we do our own bracket that we have that's set up. And so we've done pocket monsters 
in the past. We've done Mecca in the past. This month, we are dedicating it to Disney cartoons that are available. It was probably a poor decision, as these usually turn out to be. And honestly, <laughs> last week was okay. We had Goof Troop, and then we had, then we had Bonkers, yeah. which I love going back and visiting these things because sometimes there's a cartoon that maybe you didn't give a chance, or maybe you only watched a little bit of it and missed some of the like the more subtle points or some interesting things. There were some surprises and bonkers to be found, but I think if you go back and listen to it, you'll kind of see how we came down on that one. This week, I yikes, I was not looking forward to it, but we will see how this experience turned out. What are we talking about tonight? Who's going um, head to head here? Oh man, this week, this is our, our second round of seeds. We have Quack Pack mm. versus Timon and Pumbaa. How about that? That's exactly why I was not looking forward to this one. Oh, <laughs> like, really? These both sounded just like cash grabs or like just some thin, thinly veiled attempt to like uh, capitalize on some uh, already popular franchises. Quack Pack, I had no clue what this was. I was actually thinking it was Drack Pack, the, uh, oh. the horror-themed uh, cartoon from what, like the 70s, I think. So I honestly had little to no idea what I was getting into with Quack Pack, and Timon and Pumbaa just seemed obvious, but also I had never watched this spinoff. So for me, I was just like, I don't know what I'm getting into. What about you? Did you have any prior knowledge going into this? Uh, I knew that Quack Pack existed. I, I don't think that I'd ever watched it, and I, I think there's a good reason why. <laughs> and, and then with uh, Timon and Pumbaa, uh, I, I definitely know that I had watched this yeah. once or twice. I, I think that I, I, after that once or twice, I probably avoided kind of going back and watching it again. Uh, I don't know. I kind of surprised myself with being able to watch it this evening. What's funny is the only episode of Quack Pack I think I ever saw was the one we actually watched tonight. Because as soon as I saw a couple of the characters, I was like, yes, I 100% remember this. So... Uh, that was kind of good, I think, for me. I had a bit of a touchstone. But for people out there who don't know what we're even talking about with either of these cartoons, we're going to give you a little bit of background on this. So, Sean, what's the, what's the history of Quack Pack? So, Quack Pack is an American animated sitcom television series produced by Walt Disney Television Animation featuring Donald Duck and his nephews. The show debuted in September of 1996 as a part of the Disney Afternoon programming block following the major success of Goof Troop. The series ran for one season with 39 episodes. It didn't even hit that 65. We are now like out of the time period where it was just like every cartoon, no matter how shitty, always hit 65 <laughs> episodes. Yeah, so they could hit that, that syndication mark and get their money back, basically. Uh, now we're starting to like count, count pennies and uh, be like, mm, you know what? 39's, 39's good. I think we're good. Well, I mean, I, could you imagine for Quack Pack? So a lot of that... Road to 65 for some of yeah. these cartoons where them just splicing together earlier episodes to try to recreate and, and make a hybrid new story. I mean, it's, right. they, were really, they were really squeezing blood from a stone at that point, just trying to get to that syndication number of 65. I could not imagine that happening in Quack Pack without dire consequences. I, I could see him putting together like a best of clip show, like the, the kids all, oh, well, God. Let, let, me, let me tell you what this is about first and then this will make more sense, but I could see them sitting around with Uncle Donald and like going through a photo album of like their best hits for like a two-part episode where they literally just splice together their previous 62 episodes into like little clips or something. <laughs> but if you don't know what we're talking about and you're thinking, aren't they talking about DuckTales? No, no, no. Here's what's going on with Quack Pack. The show centers around Donald and pre-teen versions of his nephews Huey, Dewey, and Louie. In this series, Donald works as a cameraman alongside Daisy, who is a reporter. The group travel around the world looking for a big scoop. That's kind of the premise of what's going on here. Huey, Dewey, and Louie have more distinctive personalities, and they usually resort to extreme and strange measures to avoid getting into trouble with their uncle and to achieve their ambitions. This is a very 90s take on uh, the DuckTales kids. This was 100%. A 90s take and when we get into the the actual details and plot about this this is i, I this is I, I was thinking about this earlier today this is a poor man's ducktales this is a five and below ducktales this is a 99 cent store ducktales that we watched tonight there, there's some interesting uh attempts and ideas here and we'll definitely get into that and then as far as the execution goes we'll see how far that uh how far that goes this but. is michael keaton in the movie multiplicity and it's like seven clones down, and then Whoa, they were even, just like, even "We'll call." Further than yeah, right. Four or whatever his name was. Right. Uh, this is like this is between four and seven clones down, 
DuckTales. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. I don't even know what kind of creature that looks like at this I point. I want you to use your imagination, because four was enough. But let's just say you get any crazier than that. We're going to eat a dolphin. <laughs> I'm just going to quote Multiplicity the rest of the night. But while I do that, Sean's going to tell you a little bit of the background on Timon and Pumbaa. Uh, the Lion King's Timon and Pumbaa, often simply referred to as Timon and Pumbaa. Can we just is, call it TNP tonight? Can we call it TNP? I'm good with that. TNP. TNP. TNP is an American animated television series created by, again, Walt Disney anim- Television Animation. Which, guess what? Makes sense during <laughs> Disney Madness Month. I don't know why I keep putting that in the notes. <laughs> Uh, the show ran for three seasons on CBS, Disney Channel, Toon Disney, and in syndication as a part of the Disney Afternoon. It aired in September of 1995 to September of 1999, and is also the first Lion King-related media to show humans as humans were not present in the movie. So that's fun. Yeah. It is the... F- <laughs> <laughs> is it? Trivia. Ooh, it's trivia. It is the first of two television series based on the film, the second being The Lion Guard. we got to watch Lion Guard at some point. Yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. So if I am unfamiliar with TNP, let's say I know TNP from the movie, sure. but I have no idea, again, how they can make this cash grab with TNP. How would you summarize this, Dave? Okay, I would say that TNP centers on, obviously, Timon the meerkat, Pumbaa the warthog, you can call him Mr. Pig, as they live their problem-free philosophy, Hakuna Matata. And if that song is already in your head, guess what? You're ahead of the game. We'll explain why in just a few moments. But this series is set after the events of the original film, and it involves the characters having misadventures in the jungles of Africa, as well as across the globe in various settings for some reason, such as Canada, Britain, the United States, and, of course, Spain, because why not? While the show focuses primarily on Timon and Pumbaa, it does feature episodes centering respectively on Rafiki, in the episode Rafiki Fables, and also the hyena trio of Shenzi, Banzai, and Ed, called The Laughing Hyenas. There's also two episodes centering on Zazu, uh, who is one of my personal favorites, and I feel he's underrated as I a agree. Major Dodo. I agree. Or whatever his name was. Major Domo, Major Dodo. I think that's the pun. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so, uh, before we get into this, uh, let's set some quick ground rules sure. about what we're doing. So, for Quack Pack, as well as also TNP, We've watched the first episode of the series, as we will continue to do for everything that we watch over March Disney Madness this right. month. So as you might be aware, pilots can sometimes be a little bit challenging. It can be a little bit tough. And so we're trying to upset everybody on the same equal playing field when we're going into this. It sounded like you said we are trying to upset everyone on the same equal playing field. And I just nodded in agreement. Uh, let me just say like, this. Yep. Let me just re-clarify that. Uh, Dave, uh, we are trying and we are going to upset everybody Perfect. over the course of five weeks. Oh, God. Is this a five week month? Is this Why? a five weeker? Why I don't, do I don't do know. It? Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I don't know how calendars are. Dang this it, will be guys. fun. So, we are grading everything. We're, we have five categories that we are going through theme song, animation style, characters, plot. And if you've listened before, those are the same four standard ones that you're used to. The, the special category that we've added in is called How Disney. And so this is ultra subjective to you, the listener, as well as us, the reviewers, because it's just how you feel uh, this fits in a Disney universe. If this was something that you really enjoyed, if it brought up good feelings and emotions, also converse feelings and emotions that are good. So Also Nike feelings and emotions. Yeah, also <laughs> Asics feelings, Adidas. Reebok? All day I dream about Simba. Oh, oh! no! Oh, did Simba it. is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Which is a real bummer. So we have How Disney is our fifth category. We're scoring everything on a scale from one, which means we absolutely do not like it, to ten, which means it's the best thing. Feel free to score along and share your scores with us. Also keep in mind that we do have to give it at least a one because sometimes you'll want to give a thing a zero, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. spoiler alert maybe that happens on this episode we'll find uh, out guess what though the dip rules still apply if we absolutely hate a show and want to wipe it out of all existence and from all time we can still apply the dip rule so keep that in mind all right we want to start off with quack pack theme song yeah. tonight let's get into quack pack theme song oh boy let's do it Jesus. i guess what um uh, what jumps out at you? <laughs> this is a weird hybrid yeah of a an intro because we were given, the, the idea is that Donald is sitting down in front of a television to be able to watch some of his old Disney cartoons. 
and the, the, the his nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, are kind of shoving the television out of the way because they've got new, hip, extreme cartoons that they want to watch uh, that are that are pertinent and, and interesting to them. And so they're they're shoving out all this old garbage because they they need to bring in this new coolness that's sponsored by Cool Ranch Doritos. And so it just I, I, I watched this and I, I again, I had to break this apart into yeah. many different pieces. The the song itself uh, is, is really high energy. The music itself is very high energy. Sure, I kind of enjoyed that. That was kind of fun. What's I was. The, what's the background song though? Because it has like a beat that's like super original. Was it from? What's it from? I I, I couldn't figure that one out. It, it feels like something that was like from Greece, or or it, it feels like the hand jive or something, right? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I don't so know if I enunciated that well enough. Hand jive. Job. Okay. Nah, damn it. What? <laughs> yeah, from so, Greece. Yeah, from Greece. Uh, so I love that part in Greece. So they they had they had all of these things that were going on. Music was really fun. I'd say the lyrics for the song are uh, again just almost unlistenable. Uh, I feel like quacking, and I think I will. Gonna quack 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 till I catch my thrill. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, it, maybe, maybe it was the part where they go. In da 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 duck days, let's quack. And I was like, oh, fuck. I, I really, I'm having a hard time with this. Yeah. The the visuals though are are interesting, but it left me asking the question: Who's the antagonist and who's the protagonist between uncle and nephews? I I really I really don't know. Even after watching this episode, I still really don't know. I, I think that's one of the more interesting questions for the show, actually, because it, I think it really depends on your age range. And right. us being uh, Donald's age more now than, than the kids, I think I had a very different perspective on this, which was interesting uh, to me. I think I do too. Yeah, I will say the one sweet spot that, in addition to just sort of the the fun, energetic music that they have, is that this prominently features the nephews in such '80s fashion yeah. that I I can't I couldn't look away. I kept. Looking at them and thinking to myself, like, "Oh fuck, did I really dress like that back in the problem?" <laughs> yeah, we all did. Actually. Damn it! Yeah, yeah, that Air was hard. Style too. I, uh, I, I'm pretty much lined up with you on this one. I, I hated the Bonkers theme song last time. <laughs> that thing, that thing, literally drove me away from watching the show. This one wasn't quite as bad, but it's pretty damn close. The yeah. lyrics are just horrendous. You can't use quacking as an adjective. It doesn't make any sense. I don't care if this is a cartoon. <laughs> that pissed me off for like just. For no reason, that just pissed me off, rubbed me the wrong way. But the saving grace, I do like the idea of showing Donald and the teenage or preteen nephews kind of at odds. And I like the idea of shifting from the sort of early 90s and 80s DuckTales aesthetic with Donald and kind of like the 80s technology and all the old stuff to, to showing that now this is a new, hip, fresh 90s extreme take. Even if now that feels really like dated and jaded and, and corny. At the right. time, it was like, oh, that's cool. They're shifting into like the, the current modern era. I like that idea, and I like that that came across visually with both the redesign of the nephews, the sort of back and forth between Donald and the nephews, and, and that kind of tug of war that went on through the whole intro. I thought that was fine. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, sometimes, sometimes you just feel like quacking, Dave. <sighs> got the quacking fever, got the quacking craze. Oof. I hope you guys got paid a lot for coming up with the same song. <laughs> In the 30 seconds it took you to put it together. However, still not as bad as what we're going to talk about in a minute here. But uh, what do you score the theme song intro for Quack a Pack? For Quack Pack, I give this a six. I gave it a five. Give it okay. All right. Because it's like uh, as a song and as lyrics, it's, it's dog shit. But uh, the the visuals were interesting. I thought they did okay with that. So it's serviceable. It's serviceable. It's fine. Let's move on down to Timon and Pumbaa though. Okay. Uh, can I start with this one? Go ahead. It, this is about as lazy as you can get when it comes to theme songs. Here's what they did. They took Hakuna Matata and they added the words to Moan and Pumbaa. And that's it. <laughs> and the rest of it, the visuals are a clip show. That's it. There's a little bit of new animation with Timon and Pumbaa like mugging for the camera and introducing and singing just to remind you who they are. But that's it, man. They took one of the most popular songs from the movie and just jammed it into the, the front of this thing. I absolutely hated it. I love the song. And I love the song in the movie. I hated that they used it for this. Really? Okay, yeah. so I had 
the complete opposite reaction uh, to this. We'll balance each other out, I guess. Uh, oh, no, no. <laughs> um, I I love the song. I love yeah. all the music from Lion King. Sure. When I put this on in the kitchen, uh, fiance and special friend of the show, Melanie Harker. Special uh, she, friend. <laughs> and special friend uh, of the show, Melanie Harker. She, uh, she began singing this. I began singing this. We started listening to uh, Just Can't Wait to Be King. This brought up so many good memories. Sure. And yeah, it it a hundred percent is them, you know, introducing you, reintroducing these characters. But I also love that this is how they were introduced in the movie itself. Yeah, is through through this song, and so uh, having those memories of of being reintroduced, I'm glad that they chose this song. It's it's a hybrid. Uh, again, it's another hybrid where. You you have some dedicated infer or some dedicated animation that they use to set up sort of the beginning of the song right. uh, for Hakuna Matata, but then it just goes to all these clips things, and then it kind of bookended it. It bookends with uh, Pumbaa shaking his butt in front of the camera for everybody, and Timon kind of have flipping an around, anus, which I'm concerned about. Uh, no, that's actually like a that's so that's a real thing. So if you ever look at Disney animals in movies, they do not have buttholes. They just eat until they burst. I, I uh, presumably, but those are the most like efficient creations ever seen. Do me, do me a favor. Yeah. Watch any any Disney animated series or movie that's the out there. Got it. Any animal where you can see a butthole on something, there is no butthole whatsoever. There's one giant butthole in a Disney production, and it's called Star Wars: The Force Awakens. And oh, if you wow. know what I'm talking about, uh, look for Spencer Perry. And there, or maybe the Spencer Perry on Twitter. He's obsessed with the giant space pig's butthole uh, scene in The Force Awakens. And uh, yeah, you got a new best friend. There you go. Oh, okay. It's the only Disney well, butthole to be seen. I guess, I, you know, there has to be an exception to the rule. And so we got one one Disney b-hole. You can find Disney princess buttholes, but they're on rule Whoa. 34 pages. What? And we don't want to talk oh, about Jesus that. Jesus Christ. Redacted. <laughs> Oh man! All right, so I love this. If Dave, I just say you... redacted, that Red... automatically moves it from the podcast, right? Yeah, yeah. You could just cool, I'll, cool. I'll 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 edit this out. Wink. <laughs> cool. I don't know why you said wink and also wink, but we're good. I don't that. know. That that's weird. Uh, so what did you what did you score this, Dave? One. It, oh. It's literally for me. It's as lazy an approach to a theme song as you can get. Look, if you wanted to like bring the spirit of Hakuna Matata, you could have the the sound of it and even have a little bit of the flavor of it but have a new fucking theme song like don't just play hook look if if sight unseen i played for you and special friend mel this theme song for like the first 48 seconds you'd be like oh hakuna matata you'd just be singing it and then all of a sudden they'd be like come on and pumba and you'd be like wait what the fuck and you would feel violated you would feel physically, emotionally, and, and psychologically violated. I guess I didn't feel violated. I felt but excited you knew and energized. Going into it, what yeah, but I felt though. I felt excited and energized right. after having listened to this, and so I gave it a ten. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, man. Well, it averages out to a five point five, so I'm okay. I mean, this was this was really one of those things where the second it came on, I got excited. Uh, I, I began singing other songs from Lion King. I, I had a lot thing. of fun with that's it. That's what it drives me nuts about it. It's a great way to revisit it. It's, a, it's an advertisement. It's a commercial for watching The Lion King again, which is super smart when it comes to being like, sure. we got a new cartoon show. Here's a thing you liked. Here's not the show you're expecting, but you're still thinking of the movie. To me, it was just the laziest possible approach. All right. That's it. Oh, We're done man. with this episode. This is, this is like this is the ridiculous <laughs> wink. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable that this is we've gone uh, a, a week and a half like a, into our second episode a a, of week March. A, week point two, I think. Yeah, and we and, yeah. and we are now at the point where we finally this is the first disagreement. We've been pretty on the same page it's for everything good. else. Yeah. This, is the, this is the first one. Pretty good Exc- for twenty two percent of the month. Yeah, yeah right. Yikes. Excited. All right. Excited and to I'm, see how the rest of this goes. Back to Quack Pack now. Play Got along it. at home. We're going to talk animation style. So this, yeah. this involves everything from backgrounds, fluidity of animation, character design, things like that. So what's, what's good, Quack Pack? Uh, you know, it, it was interesting. This was very Goof Troop style animation. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they do a good job of, of reintroducing some classic characters such as Donald and, and Daisy. We have sort of these new redesigns for, for the nephews, which... You know, I I, I kind of I, I enjoyed. Yeah. I will say though that I saw, in and maybe some of the transition between like their duck, their cool duck quaff 
yeah. that they had that on was that on top of their head. It, yeah, there was that. Head. There was some weird jank every once in a while. In there terms was some of some weird of the, jank in the 90s. Uh, yeah, there was. Style, so. Yeah, fair enough. Some people had but, jank in their hair. There was some weird jank that was in the animation for this. And not to mention, for some reason, I, I found it really off-putting hmm. that they they continued to have, like, the the nephews, like, their, like, brows were furrowed. Like, so often they were just like, oh, like, which to me indicates whenever you would look at a character like that or when they would, like, that would mean that they're the antagonist. Like, they're angry, they're mean, they have, like, furrowed brows. Because they, because trust me, as we talk about in the plot, these these nephews are not thinking about anything. It's not like they're, like, deep in the middle of, you know, uh, trying to figure out where they fit in the world and, and yeah. understanding like bigger life goals as, as we mentioned sort of in the, uh, in the synopsis for that, that's not fucking happening in this show at all ever. It, it really just kind of seemed like they were sort of just pissed off uh, preteens the entire yeah. time. And that kind of pulled it down a little for me. Interesting. Uh, for me, I, I liked it because I had that classic kind of ducktails look that you, you could instantly recognize exactly who these characters were but it had sort of a modern update to help differentiate them a little bit. So gone were just like the same colored t-shirts and baseball hats. And these kid had like, like baggy jeans or baggy shorts and tank top tank top or like a, like a coat thrown over it or sweatshirt or whatever. They were still the same color theme to them, but they, they, you could tell them apart, not just from the color, you know, they weren't identical triplets. And then from the color of their clothes, you could tell them apart. They actually had like different styles to them. I particularly like this episode because our main characters get an actual like design change. We'll talk about it in the plot, but something happens to them that, that physically transform and changes them. And it sort of gives an idea of what each of their personality traits has the most like focus, which ones are, are focused uh, on, on certain things, whether they're, they're brainy or whether they're more action oriented or whether they, they act before they think things like that, that I thought was really cool. Um, Additionally, there were a couple things in this particular episode that were interesting on, on, uh, in terms of animation. There's some crazy sequences that take them from just sort of like the street level action to literally into space, Ooh. which was cool. I, I thought it was cool because it was like a nod to sort of like a Justice League. We'll, we'll get into the super heroics of this episode, but it, it was kind of like a nod to Justice League, the comics and the cartoons at the same time. And then there was like a crazy space battle that was sort of... Uh, I don't want to say futuristic, but it was like the scale of it was so massive that it was like celestial, right? So it was sort of like revisiting the Marvel comics where like there's the celestial battles and they're just like knocking planets around and like moving stars and like it's it's that. Like Galactus is going to show up at any yeah. point in time and just that, start chomping on planets. Start chewing on it. Like that that Chew. sort of scale. And I thought that yeah. was really neat. That was something different that we hadn't seen in DuckTales for obvious reasons. The, right. It gets into the surreal and kind of like the completely abstract and insane, but it was fun. And then real quick, there's one quick cut. We talk about this a lot where they kind of do like a still frame <laughs> on a, a hyper-realistic picture or a hyper-detailed thing where you get to see a lot of nooks and crannies. And it's usually used for something gross. It's usually something disgusting, something super gross that you just kind of like, ah, you have to focus on it for a second and it grosses you out. They do that with a kind of moldy old piece of pizza in this thing <laughs> that I thought was cute. And then one more thing. They make a joke about Pluto in this, which obviously right. in the Disney verse, there's Pluto, the used to be a planet in the 90s, and there's also Pluto the dog. And they do a quick cut during this joke to the classic kind of cartoon version of Pluto the dog. I was like, that's, that's cute. Like it keeps the story going, but it also was a nod back to the original stuff. So I liked a lot of the things that they threw in here, and I, and I liked the redesigns overall. And, um, you know, it was fluid and it was fun. I thought it had a good, a good energy and a good design to it. Okay. Yeah. So what'd you score this one? Ooh, so I gave this, for animation style, I gave this a seven. I gave a seven, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Back on track. Back yeah. on track. See, we're good. Until we get to TNP. Oh, boy. Uh, what was it about this one? This was the, the category where I finally started to figure out what it was about this show that they were trying to do that I didn't particularly like. This was interesting because, I, I you know, there was, it, it, I thought that this animation was a lot smoother than what we saw with Quack Pack tonight. Really? Okay. Uh, I thought that it was interesting because I, I thought that some of the colors for the characters tended to be slightly off. Like I didn't think that uh, I didn't think that uh, Pumbaa was as as red 
in this as he was in the actual movie itself. I thought that he was a little bit of a darker shade. Uh, uh, you know, and and I understand why they did this. This is this is a kids show. They were they were punching this up. They were making this a little bit more. Uh, they were making this brighter. They were making this whole cartoon in the right. world in the jungle, uh, not as not as kind of scary as when Simba was first discovering it for the first time and stumbled upon two newfound friends. Right. He was like, this is a point where like they're kind of opening this up, and so it's a this bright kind of interesting world, similar to like maybe a Tasmania. It's exactly what I. Wrote. Yeah. Yep. So very very similar uh, in nature to that. So I thought it was fun. Um, you know. Uh, it was it was okay. Like I, we don't really get any updates or any changes to these characters in general. It's just kind of a lot of more of the same. Yeah, for me, the kind of the major downer was that it wasn't up to the quality of the feature, which for obvious reasons. I mean, it's not sure. going to be. They never are. But so wait, I'm you sorry. You're nice. upset that it wasn't the same quality as the movie, but then when they used something from the movie in the show, you were like, "Oh, I wish they hadn't used that thing that was of the same quality from the movie." In the theme song. I think they're super different. I rest my case. Nah, I think they're super different because the the theme song is supposed to introduce you to the show and then kind of get you hooked to do that. And to use kind of like a pre-existing thing, it just seems lazy. It's good marketing, I guess. It just seems lazy. Um, You know, to say that they didn't use, that they use some different kind of animation, that would be to like completely redesign them or, or, or paint them in like a completely different style. Which they didn't. They were just subtle changes for the ease of, you know, cranking out however many episodes of this thing there were rather than just one feature film. So, I mean, it was a little, they were a little less, uh, the animation was a little less clean. There was a little less details, a little uh, less smooth, but it wasn't bad by any means. It was just different. Right. And, and you recognize that it was more cartoonish. What I thought was interesting, though, was that throughout the animation of this thing, there's a lot of throwbacks to classic Looney Tunes adventures and Looney Tunes episodes. Yeah. There are like they they went out of their way to kind of recreate specific scenes <laughs> in the jungle or with different characters or with different looks like when Timon kind of looks at the camera in like a fourth wall breaking scene and kind of mugs for the camera a little bit. There are are things designed specifically to mimic Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck and the, and the old kind of like Looney Tunes classic characters, which I thought was an interesting choice. We'll talk about that more in the plot. Yeah. It's um, weird to have that in a Disney yeah. cartoon where it's winking and it's nodding at Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers IP. Yeah, I, I, you know I think it's nice though because you know I have to I have to imagine somewhere in my brain that the people who were writing and producing and drawing and and putting all of this together had been so inspired by those WB classics of course. that it was something where it's sort of like a, a tip of the hat to them. Of course, yeah. But and, it's, and, and these guys, I think when they broke whatever their story was, whatever their angle was for this particular series, because what is this series going to be if it's not a Lion King story? Like, what's the angle? Is it going to be a gritty jungle Timon story? and of, Pumbaa. Right? Exactly. So <laughs> the fact that they were like, oh, let's do a Looney Tunes kind of approach. It's, it, that's why I think another reason it looks and feels similar to Tasmania. Yeah. It doesn't only look like it. It's got that similar kind of like aesthetic and tone to it. I will say one thing that I thought was interesting, it stood out to me in the, in the second half of this first episode, because they are two different stories in one half hour run. They do play with some interesting perspectives and angles. There's a lot of stuff that happens kind of down on ground level and a lot of stuff that happens in, the, in like the treetops and up in the sky. They did a lot of cool kind of like low and hang, high angle shots to change the perspective between Timon and something that he was after. So you don't see that too, eh, you'll see it. Especially, you do see it in like Looney Tunes and stuff. But it was something it, that, that jumped out and was different and interesting. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely noticeable yeah, yeah. Uh, by comparison to kind of what we saw with Quack Pack, maybe. Right. Which so, was pretty, yeah. Yeah, which was pretty cut and dry. Yeah, so. for the most part, except for the scale changes when they did go to yeah. space for that, which I liked. So what did you score this? I give this one a six. I give this one a seven. Okay, cool. So we're good. I say. All right. Character time, brah. Character time. All what right. you know about Quack Pack? Uh, I mean, this is these are the characters that you know and love from Ducktales yeah. or from any of the original, you know, Disney cartoons. Um, you know, with with Donald and Daisy, uh, and so you know, we we have we have Donald, we have Daisy. They, you know, they now have new roles and they now have new jobs. Great, which kind of gives them the the motivation or the drive to go off on some of these adventures, which we can talk about in the plot. Yeah. We have Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Great. I know who these characters are, but yeah. for some reason they're now like, oh, radical, like the entire time, Yeah, which is fine. 
I, I don't I don't mind it. I get I get why they're doing it, and I get the the appeal of the audience. And you know, I, I'm sure that I, I knew that this was on, or I'm sure that this had been like, you know, I I actually don't re- really remember watching this that much. And so like when we were when we were talking about this just in general, I I, I really I was worried that this was something that was going to be very weird, and it ended up being obviously much more easy to digest than sure. what I was expecting. What was frustrating to me is that there's a character that I don't know if this character has been in something before or where he's come from, but professor Ludwig just kind of gets dropped in here and he is the most interesting person yeah. in the room and nobody wants to fucking talk about him. Nope. He bookends and, the episode, but that's about it. Ludwig von Drake. And that is very frustrating for me, the viewer. Cause I'm like, this guy seems to have shit going on. Nobody else seems to have really much going on <laughs> but we have one person who's got crazy cool things so like maybe we talk about that person nope okay cool like <laughs> we're still talk we're still talking about having to clean a room huh great 22 minutes of having to fucking clean a room awesome <laughs> what's interesting to me is like I-, I agree ludwig von drake was a lot of fun for the few moments we got to spend with him uh it's donald's uncle apparently but i don't know that he shows up in ducktales the new ducktales any of that stuff and i mean I guess every every duck in the McDuck family line has to have like a weird mad scientist ally just like living in their basement or something because it seems like Scrooge McDuck obviously had like gyro gear loose and he was kind of on hand to to provide inventions and stuff. I don't know why you don't just bring gyro into the fold. Why not connect those two things? Because they all obviously know each other. So I don't know what the deal was with bringing in Ludwig von Drake, but I agree. He was a lot of fun as a, as a new addition. So it, it's it's interesting because like he's actually not a new addition. So okay. I had to like I did a little bit of research on him. So like he actually was originally introduced in 1961 as a part of the wonderful world of color okay. when it came on television. And he's sort of like the he was that duck if you ever remember who was like back behind a television set and kind of like pulling wires and cables and trying to figure out some of the things. And so you know we we've been talking about sort of the the duck refresh that yeah. we get for these characters, they really give uh, Ludwig von Drake uh, like a, a crazy mad scientist persona oh, yeah. uh, where it's I like want to say, Einstein. right. And I, I want to say though, that like the earlier, maybe like sixties and sixties uh, introduction that you have is sort of like a scholarly gentleman or mm. sort of an educator persona. And now they're just like, no, fuck it. Make it weird. I do remember him now. As soon as you yes. said that, I was just like, oh, I do remember him. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% remember him. Um, if you guys look him up, like the, the classic version of him, I think you'll remember his kind of like lecture hall aesthetic. Uh, I wonder if they'll bring him into the rebooted one. We'll have to ask Kate Micucci. <laughs> if Aviv ever gets his text message back. If they ever get out of Ikea. Uh <laughs> For me, if you're, and if you're not familiar with what the hell we're talking about, listen to our Scooby-Doo episode yeah. from two weeks ago. It'll make slightly more sense. A little um, bit more sense. For me, though, the, the characters, I like Donald again. He's never really been one of my favorites. He's a little irritating to me. But yeah. I like that he kind of got an upgrade in this one. That was fine. Daisy was fine for the brief appearance that she had in this. I, I like, here's where I kind of like start to separate out on Quack Pack. I like the idea of having older versions of the triplets, kind of the angsty preteen teenage kind of little jerk duck kids. But I hate the triplets themselves. I, I don't okay. think I ever really related with them even as a kid. Cause I was just like, no, like if my parents tell me to do something, I'm, I mean, I'm probably going to do it. So like, I don't like these kids. These are the jerk kids that like never do what they're told and always get away with it. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, so I, I was always kind of like, no, I don't like these kids. And I'm still kind of the same. So now I'm more just on like on Uncle Donald's side, I think. So <laughs> while I like the idea of it, uh, the execution for me was just like, this isn't my thing. All right. Yeah. Let's get the scoring. What'd, What'd you, score? you give this? I give it a six. I give it a six too. Okay, cool. Oh, so we're good. Solid. We're good All until right. we get to this mess of TNP. Oh, we got this TNP. This TNP, I would say this is really easy yeah, because it's much. it's really is TNP. And we have... We have a couple characters. Uh, we can talk about these tribe people, which is yeah. relevant to the plot later yeah. on and sort of the reveal with that, which I was yep. not comfortable with. Nope. Uh, and we, we have two squirrel characters that show up in the second half of the episode. Uh, one is a female, one is a male. Mm-hmm. The male is, I guess, French Canadian. Yep. And he's a flying squirrel. 
and the other female squirrel, she is thick. Mm, like she is. Yeah. T H I double C thick. Uh, it is just it's an interesting watch to see how all of that goes, because it's one of those things where, again, like we had criticism where Disney flaunts sexuality or puts innuendo or, or suggestive material in. And I'm not going to doubt any of it. In fact, I'm one of those people who the second I heard about it and I, I finally got to college and I could like Google these things and find them online. I was okay. like, I want to I want to look this shit up. Like, yeah. I got to figure this crap out. Like, I think it's interesting. I I think it's very interesting to see how those were influenced and like put you know, into shit that I watched as a child, but I didn't fucking know it. So, uh, but in this, this is super simple. No buttholes. Nobody has any buttholes unless it's Star Wars, which kind of makes a little bit more sense when you think about it. Just think about it. Just think about it. All right. So we have Timon and Pumbaa in this, and that's really it. It is the meerkat and the warthog that you're just like, yeah, we know what these guys look like. Great. Done. Yeah. And for me, that was kind of the problem because it's like you've got a chance to reinvent kind of everything. Like, look at Goof Troop. Goof Troop brought Goofy and Pete, and then it brought a whole new family um, aspect to the whole thing. So Goofy and Max were a family unit, and then Pete and his entire family were a whole other unit, and they, they came together, and that was the whole crux of the show. In this, you've got Timon and Pumbaa together, but it doesn't mean that they have to live in isolation. I mean, it's weird that they, the only people they seem to run into are like antagonists or means to an end that they happen to have, at least in this early episode. So, or like people to manipulate into getting them to do that, their that's work. That's what I mean. For yeah, means yeah, to yeah. an end to, to get whatever they want, whether it works out that way or not. So it's even like, look at Tasmania. Like the Tasmanian devil was always just kind of a, a one off, wacky, antagonistic character like Yosemite Sam. Right. But they folded him in well to Tiny Toons as a younger character. Uh, a younger version of himself or the or the son i guess yeah taz and then in tasmania they built an entire family unit kind of around him as well and a bunch of other wacky characters that they all introduce in the theme song timon and pumbaa they don't even have any they didn't even have a bunch of grubs really they had like one or two beetles scattered around (laughs) and that's about it it just felt like such an empty world I, i will say this though that it's like it's exactly what you would think of like a lion king grub or a beetle true or or, or that's yeah, so I mean, like you know, they 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 concentrated on you know a couple things. I don't think that I think that you're right. They didn't really flesh out this environment as much as they could, which that's is kind what, of a bummer. That's why for me, like if you just wanted T and P and you wanted more of their antics together, you'll like this. But otherwise, there's just, yeah. there's nothing new that they bring to the table. Right. All right. That's why I gave it a five. Oh, okay. I gave it I gave it a five as well. But hear me out. Yeah. Uh, because that female squirrel was so thick, I gave it a <sighs> so six. Thick. Damn. Yeah, yep. we'll we'll talk more about them because I was trying to figure out exactly what those squirrels were all about. They're like a weird amalgamation of I think maybe three different characters from like classic cartoons. Okay, we'll get there in a second. Uh, but before uh, we do, we got to go back to the plot of Dirk Quack Pack. Oh, uh, Quack Pack. We're gonna. I think we're gonna split on this one too. Oh, what are, you the, think what so? are the high points here? Yeah, I think so. Because okay. for me, the only reason I remember this one because the well, give me give me the high points of the plot. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, nephews don't want to do any of the chores. They don't want to clean up their room. Right. They become superheroes uh, in order to prevent having to do any responsibility. And then they and then Donald decides that he's going to get them uh, to do this by becoming essentially like a super villain to combat them. And as a result, they have to battle with him until there's like a huge deus ex machina at the very end. <laughs> and it wraps up the episode without any problems whatsoever, which was frustrating. Fair enough. Uh, yep. some, of the, some of the finer points. So they get to transform into superheroes by the use of Ludwig von Drake's machinery. They basically go to him whenever they have a problem and he has some sort of doohickey that will solve it. What I thought was really funny was he had a... He, he rattles off a bunch of like machines and inventions that he has. One of them is a superhero machine, which is like a giant easy bake oven that you can go into and then pop out <laughs> as a superhero. It's, it's weirdly got a switch that goes all the way to like super, you know, lawful good superhero all the way down to like rotten to the core supervillain for whatever reason, obviously to serve the plot. But, but he's also got a subatomic room cleaner right. as one of his inventions, <laughs> but the kids gloss right over that because they're obsessed with comic books right now. And they just like, no, we're going to be superheroes. I love that they threw that in there because it was just like such a cute 
nod to just be like, here's the thing that you need to do to clean your room. And they're just like, no, no, we want nothing to do with any of that. Like, that's not what we're here for. We just want to be superheroes. Well, not to mention at this point, he's like, "Ah, I've never actually been able to get it to work. And they look down and they're just like, oh, is it because it's unplugged? Is it because you've never plugged this into a wall? And he's like, oh, Ludwig is just like, Ludwig is just like, oh, yeah, that that's that's probably the reason why. Probably. And so then these three kids sign up and volunteer for untested science. Yeah, it's like super soldier serum. Okay. But it works. Yeah. And this is the this is the only reason I remember this show is because they change Huey, Dewey, and Louie, who already had kind of a redesign. They drastically change them into like freakish versions of comic book superheroes. Ooh. So Dewey pops out with a giant head and he now calls himself Brain Boy and he's got psychokinetic powers. Louis pops out as just like this massive muscle-bound duck kid, and he calls himself Captain Muscle. And when Huey pops out, they're like, he just changed his clothes. Like, I don't know what he's got. And he like randomly comes back with a kangaroo, and they're like, oh, he's Australian now. And for whatever reason, that just caught me off guard. I'm like, all right, that's very silly. But he's, <laughs> he's clearly like the speedster. They don't even give him a name. He just says, the really incredibly fast guy, that'll do until I think of a name. He never thinks of a name. But it was that redesign and that, that change uh, that redefined the nephews that I was like, okay, cool. But now I remember this. This is probably the one episode that I watched when this was actually on the air. Oh, because they turned, into, they turned from nephews into the T-Squad. T-Squad. Oh, but I like boy. this because it's a, it kind of pokes fun at the dynamic between Donald and the nephews. The whole time right. it's just an antagonistic relationship of clean your room. We don't want to clean our room. And then it just... It just amps it out to like ridiculous proportions like it, it ends up being a world destroying near universe destroying battle between the kids who don't want to clean their room and the adult who's telling them that they have to to the point that both of them kind of get backed into separate corners yeah now i i enjoyed that aspect when the battle finally left earth right but up until that point it just really lingered on the idea of them doing of fixing small problems yeah that didn't mean or have anything to do or, or just like sight gags that they had with the narrator yeah. that was around every once in a while and, and, and them being called in by the IOUN to, to be able to do stuff. So I, I don't know. There was just, there was a lot that was in there and some of it was interesting. And then other parts of it, I was just like, Ooh, you better like, you better be going somewhere with this. Like this better be, this better be, increasing velocity towards something and thankfully it does, it does. but but i am I'm, I'm still frustrated by the payoff for it see for me I, I liked it because the middle was kind of underbaked but once they really got going i thought it was a lot of fun they poked a lot of fun at the justice league with their sort of orbiting space station they poked a lot of fun at like what superheroes do in the so comics we, which is responsible yeah, so, like everything so we have like our own version of flash yeah. we have our our own version of uh, Professor from X, Ultra, if you want to call him that. No, yeah, or like I'd say almost Brainiac. Uh, sure. Um, if you... you know, and then and then an even further reach that I have for that is that we've got our own version from Ultra Force of Prime. You sure. know, and that's yeah, but we've got like we've got somebody who's a Flash, we've got somebody who's like uh, a Professor X character, and we have somebody who's like a Superman. And I don't know, like given the ability and then you've to got Doctor Doom, and they have, and then we've got a Doctor Doom, but like given the the ability to give them any interesting superpower or do anything that they want to it just kind of fell on some like really i don't know just tired tropes but i and think that's what they were doing i, I, I think that that's the i think that, that that's yeah. the point that they were trying to but it, it just i don't know it didn't it didn't hit for me okay i mean it worked for me i thought the comic book stuff was fun i thought like this is exactly what a trio of like self-centered little jerk kids would probably do if they had this power granted to them yeah. Uh, and then I love the escalation between them and the Duck of Doom with <laughs> Donald Duck essentially becoming like the ultimate um, adult in charge. And, and basically everything he tries to do to lure them out of their space station and, and into battle or into uh, cleaning their room, he like wreaks all kind of havoc. And then they're like, eh, we don't care. We're, we're just whatever. And then they're like, oh, we'll respond to a pinball machine that's in tilt, which is stupid, yeah. but whatever. Um but then when he threatens to smash every TV in the world, then they're like, okay, we've got to stop this madness. This is yeah. too crazy. I thought it was fun. And then it, they take it to the absurd level where they like flee to the North Pole and Donald shows up as like a giant Santa Claus and it just gets really fucking weird, man. To the point that they end up with the, the last 
structure standing in the universe, which is Ludwig von Drake's lab. And the kids are, are like beaten to the point that they're like, we'll do anything we have to do. I wish we could just clean our room and just reset this whole thing. That's basically what they do. He's like, oh, yeah. I can send you back in time and, and reset everything. And I think that that's that that's to me what was fresh. Like okay. when it when it picked up velocity and when they are in orbit and when they are flying through the cosmos and they're having this battle, it's fun. It's interesting because like shit, I've never seen something like that. Yeah. That was really enjoyable. I loved the little like Pluto aside yeah. that they had at that point. Those things were super fun. But then they get to a point where they're just like, yeah, I I, I feel like they they hit that Deus Ex Machina where they were just like, oh, we could turn this we could turn this superhero machine into a time machine that's going to bring you back to the moment right before you became a superhero. Was it and it the was same like, machine or just one of the other machines? You it was had the same the machine, machine, dude. Oh, was it really? That's what I was like. Oh, okay. Like Maybe that. That's a point. That's when I was like, this is fucking like I. Everything was great to that point. Like they could have done something even lazier where it's like they the the kids all wake up and they're in their room and it was all a dream. Well, and that's or like they honest, go into the bathroom and Patrick Duffy comes out of the shower and you're like, know. this was a Dallas dream. And you're just like, ah, oh, but they didn't. Like it just yeah. But here's here's what it felt like for me though. It it felt like kids it felt like a bunch of kids being asked to clean their room and then they were just like, We're just gonna read our comics, and since we're like three brothers who all like comics and doing this. We're just gonna like imagine that we are superheroes and don't have to clean our clean our rooms instead. So they didn't go to the point where it's just like, oh, it was just like imagination fun play. But that's what it felt like to me. It felt like this could have been existing in their imaginations. And then at the end, they were just like, eh, we should probably clean our rooms. I, I love the fact that like at one point they're like, we have one thing that we could use to save the day, but we, <laughs> we can't find it because our room's yeah. a fucking shithole. Uh, it was a so, cosmic uh defibrillator. Eh, I think it was like an infant defibrillator or something. Or in, oh, in uh, infin, infidibulator or something, something like that. that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, I, I was, I thought it was cute. I thought it was fun. I love the idea of it being like the ultimate battle of wills between an adult and the kids who wouldn't clean their room. I like that. So I, I'll, I'll agree and disagree with you on a couple of those points. Like the, the main one, the one probably being the most relevant is that these were in these kids' minds the entire time. Like this was something that they wanted to do. I mean, you know, we're we're introduced to them and they are laying in the room, like on top of like mountains of clothes, yeah. reading comic books, doing nothing, and they're bored. They don't have anything to do. They have all the time and everything in the world to be able to take advantage of and do, and but they're they're bored. Like we've heard this story a million times before. Then as superheroes, they're doing the exact same thing in a space station and they're just like, We're bored. Yeah. Like it, they they have all these powers now, they have all this ability again, all this potential. And they're just still bored. And so I, it's kind of why I feel like it's not something that's in their brain to be able to do. And but then I feel like also everything. That's why these kids are little shits. Yeah. And, but that's, that's the challenging thing that we've kind of talked about and hinted at is who's the actual protagonist and who's the antagonist yeah. in this? Because, like, I, looking at this in a different angle, like, I don't know. I kind of feel like Donald was sort of, was sort of the protagonist. They like, each antagonize each other. Which doesn't really leave you with anybody to root for, which I was kind of like, I'm okay with that because it just lets you watch this kind of battle unfold. Yeah. Eh, I, I mean, I get, I'm going to give it kind of like a week. Yeah. Eh. Well, give okay. it, what, what's the score you gave it out of 10? Uh, I gave this a five. Holy shit. I gave it a 10 originally, but the fact that they had a uh, kind of cop out at the ending, I knocked it a point. So I brought it down to nine. I really thought the idea was fun. I thought they executed it well, and I thought it was a great kind of first story to dip into to introduce uh, these this like newly rebooted characters i had a lot of fun with it okay hated the characters but i love the idea of the story <laughs> yeah right. which is a, it was a very weird experience watching this because i was like i enjoyed this but just not the people who were in it so for tnp yeah. we had one episode split into two parts we had yeah. bora bora and we had saskatchewan oh, wait, but how's bora spelled uh but it's spelled like it's a boar damn it b-o-a-r-a like, no, no, like B-O-R-E. <laughs> I wish. Uh, so we've got Bora Bora and we've got Saskatchewan catch. Uh, if you were to give me Bora Bora highlights, what would you what would you tell me? I would say at TMP are all set for a super cool beach vacation, even though their entire life is essentially a vacation. Uh, Pumbaa gets kidnapped by a trio of natives, super racist looking natives from like back in the day, uh, Looney Tunes style. But due to some miscommunication, Pumbaa ends up being their leader. 
And when Timon goes to rescue them, he ends up becoming a sacrifice to a volcano. Uh, right. This all ends poorly for pretty much everyone involved, but they escape with their lives at the end of the day. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and they manage to escape with their lives because the big reveal towards the end that we are both eye rolling at right now. Well, which... first, first they use a little Samba escape. So they dipped back into the Lion King once again and used that. They rehashed that plot to get away from the hyenas. Right. Where they threw the luau party. This time they do a samba. So they, uh, so they, do, this, they do this little samba bit. And then at the very end, we have all of these racist looking tribe people who take off their masks and reveal themselves to be African Americans. And or not or just or at, like or Canadians people. or like yeah they're they're, they're like dark skinned people or they're yeah they're they're black people and they are in on this island and they make comments about the fact that uh, this was some type of a this was like a tourist thing for them to go do called be a native weekend and Which, if they leave early they lose their deposit and it was just kind of like ay 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 I don't know this seems in poor taste. <laughs> It was uncomfortable. It was really uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I get it as like a nod back to the old, I think back to like Bugs Bunny when he's in like the tropics or like somewhere in Africa, or they had that like the classic kind of panning across the, you know, the continent of Africa where they hit the the Congo and everything just like blacks out. Like there's nothing. It's the, it's the heart of darkness kind of thing. Right. Uh, where they're panning through the jungle and all kinds of crazy stuff is happening. Like that kind of racist shit you can get away with back in like the 50s. Uh, mm. to, to have a nod back to that and then that's your your out your and your reveal yeah uh, i don't know not i wonder not, if not they, doing too well i wonder if they originally were all like white people and they were like oh this be a native weekend we're gonna lose our deposit stanley like Oof. and then some standards and practices was like that's probably a little too much <laughs> no. maybe we should literally change the skin tone of some of these people so it's at least just confusing and not straight up racist oh god yeah this is uh it was weird there 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 were a couple fun moments that were in this like the the whole uh you know uh hey poba why don't you put on this sarong what's what's sarong nothing nothing sarong what's the matter with you like some of these classic jokes they never die uh so it was just anybody laughing like, is anybody just real quick check is anybody at home you know they were i i I can't do a good timon impression okay but i enjoyed them there were like there were moments where like timon's like gotta be gotta be brave gotta be strong gotta be kidding me like when he comes across pumbaa like you know uh in like his throne i thought you were singing like gotta be strong gotta be tough gotta stick together whatever that song is get into it man yeah i can't remember the rest of it or who it's by or what it is no that was from the 80s Uh, yeah or the 90s all i know i know love will find a way okay done (laughs) guys we are ditching this podcast and we're starting a podcast that is dedicated to songs that are on dave's mind Mm. from the 80s and 90s that we're going to go back and explore the gritty details of how they were produced it's just going to be mumbling and muttering through poorly remembered lyrics that only covers 17 percent of a song (laughs) not even 17 percent it's called called dave does music mm. can't wait ddm coming at so, you um real quick can you explain why pumba all of a sudden has like storm conjuring magic in this episode no okay so that that was that's my final bit for this is yeah. that they ask him to summon fire at mm-hmm. some point and there's he like a basically... ritual fire that goes out and they're like you're the king you need to start this fire up again or we're gonna have problems right so they bring this like cauldron in front of him it in like, order a, to... uh, like a bowl of sterno yeah right <laughs> so they bring this bowl of sterno in front of them and they're like you have to light this on fire and fucking warthog gets possessed yeah he's got and fire he's summoned, eyes he's got a cloud like a like a ring cloud around like him. a doom cloud yeah. that he just has that looks like he's about to like summon something from like another plane yeah. and then the fire magically starts i think it was he, like a lightning i think lightning struck the yeah. bowl and then fire caught yeah. and like and but like even puba is just like huh I didn't, didn't, didn't know I could do that. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. And uh, and then immediately there's like a rainstorm that happens after it that douses this fire out and yeah. puts it out. And the and in a moment's time they're like it's in a snap. They're immediately called imposters. I was like, did you not see him summon <laughs> storm clouds? <laughs> yeah. And 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 harness the power of lightning in order to to set ablaze like this 
this fucking bowl of sterno? Like, how did you not? Uh, I don't know. It was, it was Yeah, it was impressive, but it was kind of confusing. But I think that that's probably it for Bora Bora. Yeah, what about Saskatchewan? Catch it oh, man, uh, let's uh, talk about, uh, you mean uh, Super Thick Squirrel? Mm, <laughs> is, what I'm, thick. is what I'm calling this? Yeah, this that's going to go up on our Instagram page, by the way. We will uh, post a picture of this lady squirrel with the word yeah. thick. Thick. Uh, or, or just a... Uh, uh, I'm going to have some fun with this one, needless to say. Yep. Uh, so uh, this this is more of a slapstick sort of episode more that they have. Of, Jesus, it's, it's the whole show a is very slapstick. slapstick uh, where they're trying to get this uh, this delicious delicious beetle that they is went there all the way to Canada for it. Oh, yeah, they for some reason they're in the Saskatchewan province uh, of Canada looking for this fucking beetle, and as and and like and Timon is the only one that's able to obviously get up into a tree. He's falling down. He's doing acrobatics at this point. Uh, he's coming really close, and then this fucking squirrel this flying squirrel gets in his way and he like tumbles down to the ground at this point he or uh they indicate that there is another squirrel that's there and it the turns out her motive squirrel the lady squirrel and it turns out lady squirrel's objective is to get male squirrel that's up there These nuts. Uh, because <laughs> oh boy because that's truthfully what she is looking for she is she is looking for him in a romantic fashion and so they set up and they 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 trap male squirrel and then they lie to him that he's going to this dinner. Right. He gets to this dinner, they bring out like female thick squirrel and and sh- and male squirrel is just enamored mm-hmm. with her. Full he on is Looney Tunes wolf. Woo! Wolf sees a hot lady. Pepe Le Pew sees it. Uh, he's got that like, yeah. he's got the lump in his throat yep, that's just going collar, like up and down. Like, yep. ooh, he is like real into what's about to happen. And I mean, to the point where like thick female squirrel just like carries him like off. Now, here's the thing. The original plan was supposed to be that if Timon and Pumbaa get this girl a date, land this squirrel for her to take home. She was then going to get a whole bunch of, of beetles for them to eat for dinner because these guys haven't eaten in God knows how. Yeah, long. they're starving. Yeah, but meanwhile they can like cook up a whole meal of nuts for the squirrels, which is fine. But they need to eat the beetles themselves. It's in a macadamia sauce. Okay. But then at the end of this whole thing, those two go off into the sunset after Timon kind of has like this weird aside about how he's a bachelor and he doesn't love. He doesn't think that romance yeah. is a real thing and that relationship shouldn't exist and you should just stay a bachelor forever. I was just like, all right, man, again, we got it. Like, you had this whole thing in The Lion King. We we get it. But you just blew the spot. Like, you ruined everything. It, it, it's it's really confusing on multiple levels. One, uh, as we've talked about, this is like, this is an arranged marriage. sort of date. Yeah, marriage. <laughs> yeah. This is an arranged date that they put together that could not have gone better yeah. in T&P's favor. Yeah. All right? Everything worked so, out perfectly. It, it worked out perfectly. It worked out perfectly because yeah. the squirrels, uh, as we find out, this male squirrel, this this French Canadian male squirrel, is just like, you know what? He's like, not only does he like it thick, but he's like, you know what? I'm tired of flying around yeah. and frivolously going wherever I want to. Like, I've met you, and like now I want that person by my side. And like, that's kind of a beautiful message. Yeah, that's really between you two know weird squirrels between two between two squirrels between like a beta squirrel and like a real thick you think squirrel he was a beta squirrel though he, lo- he looked flying he, around doing whatever look, he wanted dude looked real carefree in beta buddy mm, you think he was beta though yeah probably and so they're they're going through all this stuff and then suddenly Timon just like out of nowhere is just like nah that's fucked up man like you don't need women you don't need anybody else as his best friend is like as like his life his life partner is standing next to him probably thinking you would be a pretty good meal if i ate you right now yeah. but it's just like totally dissing the idea of romance and being together with somebody and having feelings for shit and it's just like what, what? <sighs> i'm assuming that'll know. play out over the course of this terrible show's terrible 39 <laughs> episodes and he'll like <laughs> learn a lesson and whatever but like in the moment you're no this went smarting. on for three seasons dave uh, god damn it this is three seasons this is 96 to 99 man speaking of three things that are terrible what three cartoon creatures do you think uh this french canadian beta squirrel as you describe him were a combination of i thought of three distinct characters that came to mind we we gotta mention that this squirrel is flying around, just going like la la la, just like flying around like Captain Underpants, just screaming out that for whatever just reason. Ridiculousness. What did over what did you and think? Over and over again. All right. So first, like 
uh, Rocky the Flying Squirrel. Sure. Obviously. Mighty Mouse, because he's always okay. got to like announce when he's going to jump into action. Always okay. has to have a little sing song. We get it, Mighty Mouse. Uh, and Pepe Le Pew. Oh, okay. It was like a weird combination of those three for me. Okay, so so something that's exactly along the same lines as what we saw, a flying squirrel. Yeah. Um, I actually was the secret sec- squirrel, and that was 100% wrong. Oh. <laughs> uh, what was the second one Mighty that you Mouse. had? Mighty Mouse. Yeah. Mighty Mouse, you know, a uh, big kind of grand entrance, and then a, then a sexual predator. <laughs> Pretty to much. Round up the, to round up the mix. Pretty much. And, yeah. and especially going back to like the Looney Tunes days. Um, I think it kind of right. tied it in. But for me, overall, these two episodes, was just like, I don't care. I don't want to know what they're doing. I don't like what they're doing. I don't like how they're going about it, and I don't like how it ends. So what did you score this? Two. Two? Yeah, one for each. All right. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I gave this originally a five, sure. but because, again, that female squirrel was so thick, thick. I gave it a six. Thick for six. For six. All right, we're gonna get to the most. I don't know what to do with this. I, I, I the just, show. I, I almost want to point though, because I keep saying like, at one point, thick squirrel walks past the table, oh, yeah. and like they flaunt her squirrel boobs no in a butthole, way that though. is uncomfortable. No butthole though. No butthole. So, mm. not even a little, right. little acorn. Oh jeez, nothing. All right, so how Disney was it? How Disney was it? All right, so guys, we're How Disney was it? final category. We're getting into this. So this is just our subjective feeling yeah. of how we felt this fit into our larger idea that we have of Disney in general. So starting with Quack Pack, how are you feeling about how Disney Quack Pack is? You know, I liked it because it put a spin on a Disney classic going all the way back to the 60s, which they've kind of reinvented themselves every decade more or less. But it's also self-referential, and it, it definitely plays into the 90s tropes uh, for good and bad, because it's also kind of like an update that I don't think anybody asked for. Yeah. Yeah, so I like the idea of it, but the fact that it was like, uh, Disney's like, we got this thing, we don't quite know what to do with it, but the 90s are extreme. Uh, so I, I gave it an 8 out of 10 for how Disney it was. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? It felt very Disney to me, to be like, we've got this property, let's make a thing out of it and jam it into the 90s. Oh, okay. Like, this feels pretty Disney to me. Okay, so I, I gave this uh, two points for having... Uh, no, hold on. Let me, I'm going to count oh, up. Oh, Christ. All right. I'm going to count up, buddy. Because uh, I had Donald and Daisy. Right. Uh, I, I, gave it a, I gave it a third point because I really love the idea of, of Ludwig being brought back into a larger design. Uh, I gave one point for the nephews, and then I gave one little... Tip of the hat for the uh, for the Pluto. I gave this a five. Okay, the fives. I I, I felt that I felt that this was something I you know I feel like with Disney personally I feel like Disney really doesn't sometimes execute on something unless they have a really good plan with it. Yeah. And I think like you said, this was something that nobody was asking for. Nobody really wanted, but they were just like, we can make that sweet sweet Disney bucks out of it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Five. So what's and your you, total out of fifty for this one? You got if you got to total it up. With my point change, I give this one a 35 out of 50, which I think is pretty good. The C- minus for this is probably pretty close in line with uh, what was going on on IMDb. I could be 100% wrong because I'm just trying to do that from memory. I think most of these are around like the high sixes, early sevens. Let me take I, give, I give this a 29 as a total. Yikes, that's a failing grade. This has a 6.9 rating on Quack Pack, so I'm close, which means I'm right. Sean's wrong, but that's fine. We'll deal with it later. <laughs> What'd you give it? Sounds, like, sounds like a fucking threat. Well, let's uh, let's get into uh, Timon and Poon. Welcome TMP. to the show, my brother Andrew. Sean calls him Andy. Just here to threaten Sean. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Great. We're okay. We're gonna get into it on the. All right, all right. Timon and Poon over here. This is, this looks rough. This this number that I'm looking at as my total looks too low, and I need to recalibrate. That seems <laughs> wrong. But go ahead. What oh you got? man, uh, I enjoyed how Disney this was. I enjoyed the fact that the theme song, I, I know that you will disagree with this. It was a nice segue into me getting in the mood in terms of how much I love the Lion King and how much I love these two characters. Uh, I'm excited to see these characters. It's very slapstick. Uh, it's very kind of silly, but it's nice to kind of see you have them as supporting characters, obviously, in the movie. Now you have a chance to kind of see some of their uh some evolving jokes and, and, and continuation of what they do and sort of the, the travel and the relationship that they have. 
I will say it's a little bit disturbing to have, kind of have Timon just be like, you don't need anybody. Like, I'm just going to be by myself as a bachelor forever. So with that, I, I gave it a six. But wait, because of Thick Squirrel, I gave it a seven. Damn it. Yep. For me, look, when this comes to Disney capitalizing on an already successful property, excuse me, it's a 10 out of 10. <laughs> when it comes to delivering new and fresh ideas that are actually interesting and something I'd like to watch again in the future, it's a zero. So I'm going to average the two together and get a five. Okay. It's not terrible. What's your total though? Because my total is rough. Oh, uh, your thick. total is, your total is low because rough. you, it's rough. You, well, yours is bad because you gave a, a one to the theme song. I had a 36. Okay. So that was on par with more or less what I had in the other. One. I have a 19. Ooh. which I'll tell you what, the IMDb score for Timon and Pumbaa is a 7.1, so I'm way off the mark on this one. But it just wasn't for me, man. It, it, felt, it felt like a cash grab. I didn't like what they were doing with the characters that I liked, uh, with the property that I really like, and it didn't offer me anything new. So okay. I'm, I'm going to stick with that. We're going to tally these all up at the end of the month, by the way. Average them out. So if Sean likes something a lot more than I do, uh, or vice versa, it doesn't really matter because we're going to average these out. And then we'll see kind of what our ranking is at the end of the month. Uh, right. Unless I decide to use math to sabotage it, and then <laughs> redacted. <laughs> oh, man. And if you have uh, point totals that you'd like to share with us over yeah. Twitter, please feel free, or Facebook, please let us know, and please post them up there. We'd love to see what your total was and how you felt this was integrated and panned out into the Disney universe itself. And these are fluid, too. Yeah, if you, if you guys yeah. can really convince us one way or another, um, we can change them. We can add a point here or there. We usually Whoa. like to make amends where we're like, okay, you convinced me, so one way or the other, minus or plus one point. Yeah, you got to get that spite point in yeah, there. Yeah, spite points are great. For, for a one or for a, a plus one or a minus one. We usually don't do that when it's just Sean and myself. But when we have other people on the show, spite points tend to flow freely. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh. Hopefully we've got some guests coming up in a couple of weeks, so it should be interesting. <laughs> but we say this because, yeah, you listeners, we love to get your opinions. Guess what? Turns out you guys have a lot of opinions. Mm. And so to honor some of these opinions, we are going to turn this over to longtime listener and friend of the show, Bobby Anthem, for this week's Love It or Hate It. Bobby, take it away with this week's Love It or Hate It for Quack Pack. This Love It was written by The Little Songbird on August 18th, 2012. The review is titled, A Very Underrated Show, Well Worth Checking Out. She said, The concept was interesting, different in allowing the cute and rascally Huey, Dewey, and Louie of the old Disney cartoons and DuckTales to age, but one that did have potential to work. Is Quack Pack as good as DuckTales? In terms of consistency, maybe not. Is it worth watching? I absolutely think it is. Quack Pack is fun and very underrated in my opinion. Perfect it isn't, with some of the slapsticky scenes a little overly silly and some instances where something happens and it happens for no reason or doesn't make much sense. But the good far outweigh the bad. The animation is bright and colorful and is suitably fluid also. The music is very catchy with the instrumental writing really quite electric. The writing manages to be witty and intelligent, and above all, very smart. And the story ideas are crisply paced and mostly interesting. The voice acting is great. There are some very talented voice actors here who really give their all. Overall, underrated and very smart show. Not one of Disney's very finest, but one that deserves more attention. 9 out of 10, Bethany Cox. And Our Hated was written by Cam Iacano on September 1st, 2017, who rated the show 1 out of 10 and titled the review, Thank God for DuckTale 17. It says, well, this is pretty bad. I'm just glad that the Duck Nephews got a second wind in DuckTale 17. I know it's not supposed to be viewed as an actual reboot, just a spinoff sequel, but it's pretty bad. Huey, Dewey, and Louie were arguably bland characters in DuckTales, but that doesn't mean they weren't charming and likable. Here, however, they aren't at all. The design for Huey, Dewey, and Louie looks so forced to look like cooler versions of their past selves, not to mention they all have the same personality. The cool bad boy archetype that was a thing in the mid-90s, I guess. One thing I hate is that very often they visit Ludwig von Drake, 
He's a good character, but he only serves a purpose as the sisters from Johnny Test served for their inventions to be used for plot devices. I always hated things like that. If you're going to call it Quack Pack, the Quack Pack, do something unique and adventurous, not slap another character on there for the sake of having something to base episodes on. The intro is pretty lame, too. It doesn't have the same catchy vibe as the other intros did, though, in the later Disney afternoon shows like this. The shows began to stagnate. Donald is enjoyable. I constantly rooted for him because he has to put up with the triplets crap all the time, as well as Ludwig von Drake. What's our love it or hate it now for T&P? This love it was written by Seth Nelson on September 4th, 2006. Seth rated the show 10 out of 10 and titled his review, Hakuna Matata, again. He said, Because of the trend that was being formed for all the Disney afternoon cartoons back in the day, I was hoping for a Lion King cartoon to come out. And it did. The cartoon was called Timon and Pumbaa, created in 1995 and shown on the Disney afternoon for a couple of years then. Like with The Little Mermaid and Aladdin, more adventures had sprung up for the main characters, those being Timon the Meerkat and Pumbaa the Warthog, a.k.a. Mr. Pig. I liked all the new characters and the new enemies. They were so funny, and there were some episodes that had only the hyenas or Rafiki, and those were good too. Man, this show is the classic. And our Hated is titled Sigh, written by... Killig Sama on December 2nd, 2003. It says, This wasn't one of the best Disney cartoons. I miss their old classics like DuckTales, Darkwing Duck, Tailspin, and Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Timon and Pumbaa was somewhat a kiddie version of Ren and Stimpy, still with the farting and belching. The show became repetitive when Timon and Pumbaa's archenemy, Quint, would arrive. Yeah, I didn't like Quint, and he wasn't funny. Neither was that bear that was featured on the Toon Disney version. The bear falling in love with the human irked me. Some of the Timon and Pumbaa cartoons were tolerable. I'm just tired of them running into Quint. Is it me, or does Bobby sound pained when he's reading these? I try to pick ones that are they have it together, but some I mean, of them you are gotta, just so bad. You just gotta find another Dudas review. I do need to find a Dudas review. There's one guy who's just like... <laughs> Every sentence ended with four or five exclamation points. And then he's like, that's why I got into reviewing cartoons. And I was like, I'm not going to give this to Bobby. He's, yeah, he's, he's going to blow his throat out. He is blasting off into the stratosphere. Thanks. Let's hope he stays there. <laughs> oh, God. Not Bobby. No, not Bobby. Of course not Bobby. Unless we're animating Bobby as a rocket ship. Oh, man. Guys, we're trying to get Bobby Anthem animated this year. 2018 is the year we get Bobby I, I kind of want to put a brand new patreon thing just for animated bobby anthem adventures <laughs> like that's it i kind of want i'm gonna do that i'll do that all right that'll be our all march right. patreon bump nice awesome guys we're now at the point where we are gonna give our reviews whether we recommend this or whether we do not recommend this and if we don't recommend it we have the option to give it the dip so dave how you feeling about Quack Pack? Quack Pack, I will say, if you're a diehard DuckTales fan, I'll recommend it, at least checking it out. It's a different take. It's a different flavor. It might not be to everybody's um, appetites. That sounds weird. But I recommend at least checking it out. And then you can decide if you want to pass or not. It, it's serviceable. It's fine. They've got a lot of funny jokes. They've got a really good, um, talented voice acting team. And I like the animation and, and the kind of wackiness they do with it. So worth checking out. What about you? Okay, uh, I'm actually gonna not recommend Quack Pack. Okay. I uh, it just it didn't hit the mark. It, it, it just there were moments of it that I wanted to have a, a larger or bigger payoff than it did, and they they just really went with a Deus Ex Machina in the in the final seconds to to make it easier. Yo, you uh, dipping it though? Um, I'm not. I'm not dipping it. Okay. I'm not dipping it because of my love of Ducktales, the original and the reboot. Uh, this just felt like a lazy person's DuckTales. Well, I mean, it was the 90s. <laughs> so that kind of makes sense. Yeah. The aesthetic. So, uh, so I'm not going to recommend it. Gotcha. Let's, let's move on yeah, to... Yeah, how do you feel about TNP? TNP? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
it's, it's hard because it's hard because you know we talked about a lot of stuff tonight. I, I I think I would give it the same quack pack recommendation that you gave for TNP. I'd say if you if you're really a fan of this, I'd say you know and a, and a completionist, check it out. There's the the music really brought me into it. The Timon dialogue where he's kind of discouraging people from finding love and happiness kind of really was a little bit off putting for me. Uh, there's some fun slapstick that you probably know and love from these characters. I, I get the feeling, though, that after three seasons of this, it's a lot of the same. It's a lot of just repetitive stuff. And I'll have to say this. I'm really sorry, but those native tribes people that reveal that, ah, that, I mean, that just feels fucked up. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I wonder if Disney has ever come out and actually said officially anything about it. They were probably just like, ah, oh, don't worry. Doubtful. There were no but there were no buttholes on those animals, so nope. we no just kind of so we're clear. Yeah, uh, so uh, I'd recommend this if something. I would recommend this if you are a diehard Lion King fan. Uh, otherwise, this might not be something that really kind of hits its mark. You might not See, be interested, and that's where I'm stuck. Like for me personally, I don't want to recommend it because it's just if you align yourself with my with my taste, this is not something you're really going to enjoy. <laughs> Which is weird because I love the Lion King. I love Timon and Pumbaa as characters in the Lion King. And I love the classic Looney Tunes. I just don't think this combination of things works for this show. But if you love all those things and really want to see Timon and Pumbaa in some new adventures and just expect like goofy kind of slapsticky wackiness, then yeah, it's something you should seek out. So uh, I'll give it a wet fart of a recommendation. Like, wow, you got to do it sometimes. It's not always pleasant. But once you do it, you know how to prevent it in the future. We just need a soundboard for you from now on. It's just like, Probably on the wet now. fart scale, Dave, what uh, are you giving it? And you're like, Oof. leave it with that. It was more of an air horn toot, but. <laughs> I don't know what that was. We need like a smell vision scale. I don't, I don't know. I don't, for me personally, I can't really recommend it because I would not like to watch more of this. But I can see if your fans, like, like Sean mentioned, uh, soft recommendation. All right. So hey. soft, not thick. So soft, just like not not soft, like that female squirrel. Not at like all. a beta recommendation. <laughs> if you're into uh, thick squirrels, hundred percent check it out. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Guys, this is the end of week two oh, God. of our Disney March Madness. We got a lot more coming uh, up over the next couple of weeks. This is going to get challenging, isn't it? How excited <laughs> we are. There's no, there's better stuff coming up because Sean kind of waited it so that. The more recognizable stuff, I think, is coming up later this month. Well, I'll say this. The stuff that I'm really excited yeah. to talk about is coming towards the end of the month. Cool. And those are those are going to be some of those instantly recognizable Disney cartoons oh, that you, you hopefully know and love. Yeah. So. I'm excited. If you're like, why didn't you guys talk about this yet? Hang in there. Yeah. If you're like, why can't they reboot Bonkers for Dave? Damn. I don't know. No. But I mean, maybe we'll start a Patreon for that. Nope. Or maybe we'll just... End this podcast and do a whole podcast just that reviews bonkers cartoons. Nope. nope not doing that. From and oh, all right. Do they still have asylums? Do they still have asylums? Mm-hmm. Uh, soul asylums. Damn it. <laughs> this is a 90s throwback podcast. <laughs> I'm real proud of myself with that. Yikes. Oh, God. All right. Uh, hey, what hey. are you up to in the next couple of weeks? <laughs> Guys, as always, I do live improv comedy in Washington, D.C. with a group that is called Knox. That's spelled N-O-X exclamation point. We perform with Washington Improv Theater. You can find tickets and times with dc.org. And I'm always on the Instas and the Turs at Sean Paul Ellis because Dave hates it. Dave, what are you up to? I'm up to the same old shit. You can find me on Twitter at DrClawMD where I gripe about a lot of things. You can also find me on Collider.com, Nerdist.com, and DaveDrumbore.com. If you want to find out more about this little show right here and how we can get Bobby Anthem animated in 2018, head on over to patreon.com slash Saturday Morning Cartoons. Remember, that's morning with a U. You can also follow along on Twitter at Morning Tunes. Check out our website, SaturdayMorningCartoons.com. Keep up with Sean's handiwork and thick squirrels, no buttholes, on our Instagram page. <laughs> Please hashtag everything, thick squirrel, no butthole. Two separate, two separate hashtags. Let's get Disney excited. Uh, Keep these conversations going on Facebook and listen to our free audio podcast each and every week through YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. As always, we appreciate the thumbs up because we're getting hammered on the YouTubes. But we understand. (laughs) 
<laughs> and be like William and Shannon and be super awesome and send us cool emails, Saturday morning cartoons at gmail.com. I think that's going to wrap it up for round two out of five of Disney Madness. Any parting thoughts, bud? Uh, I think the only parting thought that I have for this is that I, I was wrong. This is only a four week month. There is oh, no thank fifth. God. No fifth Silver week in this. Lining. We're halfway through this. Sorry, buddy. We are, uh, we're halfway through, but we've got, uh, we've got two full weeks of exciting nice, cartoons nice, that are going to be coming up. I like it. Thank you guys so much for listening. Hakuna Matata, and we will see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks a lot for listening to Saturday Morning Cartoons. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to transform. <laughs>